cornerback, receiver, linebacker, something else? We're making the case for various positions for the New York Giants at number 25. That's coming up next on the Locked On Giants podcast. You are Locked On Giants, your daily New York Giants podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, New York Giant fans, and welcome to another edition of the Locked On Giants podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast family, your team every day. I'm your host, Patricia Trena. Happy to have you with us on this Tuesday. We've got a busy week here on the Locked On Giants podcast. And on today's show, we're going to make the case for different positions, cornerback, receiver, something else. What should the Giants do at number 25 and why? And I'm going to just make a case for and against And at the end of the uh, session, you decide what makes the most sense. Or maybe you decide that none of my scenarios make sense. It's all up to you and it's all good. So that's on today's show and happy to have you with us. So let's get right into it. And I'm going to start off with the position that I think the Giants are going to go in the the, uh, first round at number 25, and that's cornerback. All right. Now, I wrote an article yesterday or actually a couple days ago for Giants country in which I was looking at the visits that the Giants have had with various draft draft prospects. Just, you know, before I I get into my argument here for a cornerback or against a cornerback, um, a visit doesn't always mean that, you know, that player is going to rank high on a team's draft board. I mean, sometimes teams have players come in for visits and they, you know, there's something that they want to check on, be it a personality quirk, be it the medicals, be it, um, you know, fit, you know, be it their football acumen, whatever the case may be. And sometimes those visits do result in guys dropping off the board. So just because you see a a guy that's been reported as visiting with the Giants, it doesn't necessarily mean that that's a guy that's going to be drafted. Now, I know why a lot of people would think that, because last year, I think with the exception of maybe one or two guys, every guy the Giants drafted they had in for a pre-draft visit. So let's talk about cornerback now. So should the Giants make cornerback their first pick of the draft? Here is the the arguments for. They have a Dory Jackson coming back, but he's only under contract for technically this year. He's got a voidable year next year. They're going to have a competition, according to Joe Shane, who, who told the uh, reporters at the league meetings last week, They're going to have a competition between um, Aaron Robinson, Cordell Flott, Nick McLeod, and, you know, some other guys. Darnay Holmes, I think, is going to be in the mix. So they feel that they have some depth there. And and Shane went out of his way to point out that, you know, we've proven in the past that it doesn't matter where you're drafted or how much money you're making. You've got to compete. and We're going to play the best players. Okay, I get that. Now, that being said, you got to look at certain things at the makeup of the cornerback group. When Adoree Jackson went down, they didn't have anybody to step in. I mean, Fabian Moreau stepped in. I get it. Um, Nick McLeod stepped in. I get it. Um, But there was a drop-off. I think we can all agree there was a drop-off in the performance. So just because you've got bodies at the position doesn't necessarily mean you don't have a drop-off. And while I can appreciate You know, the Giants saying that they want their guys to compete, that they feel that they have depth and whatnot. Look, this is a deep, deep cornerback class. If you don't come away with a potential starter in this class within the first four rounds, something is rotten in Denmark. All right. So I'm sorry. I'm not buying this whole notion that, you know, they're downplaying the whole idea of maybe drafting a cornerback. I, I just think that, you know, yes, you, you want to do your due diligence. You want to give these guys who are entering year two, then, you know, in this system, a chance to compete. I get all that. But if you have a chance to get a really good cornerback, why wouldn't you, you know, Aaron Robinson, I know they wanted him to start last year. The guy can't stay healthy. Cordell Flott, um, you know, could he be a starter? He's got to stay healthy too. 
And, you know, I'm not so sure, you know, on the outside, I'm not sure that's the best fit for him. What are they going to do with guys like Rodarius Williams, who basically was banished to the inactive list? Um, I don't even know if he's going to make the roster, to be honest with you. He still is on the roster, but is he going to make it? I don't know. So the Giants might have quantity at the cornerback position. I question the quality, though. Just based on what they've shown so far, that's not to say that they can't be good, some of these guys, but I need to see it. And if I'm the Giants, you know, I think they want to see it as well. And if you don't address the position, then, and these guys don't live up to what you are hoping they could be, guess what? You're screwed. (laughs) So, you know, cornerbacks are so important to this defense. They're important to any defense. And look, here's the bottom line. If the Giants want to close the gap between themselves and the Cowboys and the Eagles, you better get cornerbacks that can cover, you know, the C.D. Lambs, that can cover the A.J. Browns, the Devonta Smiths, and even what we'll talk about Washington, the scary Terrys, you know, Terry McLaurin. You've got to have guys that can cover these guys because you're facing this team, these teams uh, twice a year. If you don't have guys on the back end of your defense that can keep up with those guys, guess what, guys? You ain't closing the gap with those teams. So, again, I know Joe Shane kind of downplayed it a little bit. He didn't come out and say, oh, you know, we're not going to draft a cornerback. I think he's going to draft a cornerback. I would not be surprised if he drafts two. But that said, don't downplay it. I mean, to me, there's really, really no case against not taking a cornerback at 25 if a good one falls to you. And a good one should fall to you if, you know, the Giants believe that, you know, this this draft is as deep as, you know, these draft analysts believe that it is. So for me, cornerback is 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 got to be up there for 25. Now, that's not the only position I think that should be up there for 25. We're going to talk about receiver coming up after this. Hey, Giant fans, we might be in the month of April, but Built Bar is extending its Built March Madness bracket, which means if you have a favorite Built Bar or Built Puff and you haven't voted, get moving. Visit BuiltMarchMadness.com to vote for your favorites and push them to the championship. You know, I voted for the Mint Brownie Puff, which is my favorite. It's a limited time offering, which I was able to pick up recently. So which bar or puff will you vote for? Support your bar or puff at BuiltMarchMadness.com and be automatically entered into a drawing where 50 lucky Locked On listeners will get a free box of Built and one lucky Locked On fan will win a 12-month subscription to Built to have Built's best bars or puffs delivered monthly straight to their door. Vote every day. Like I said, the, the contest has been extended for this first few days of April. And don't forget, you can pick up your supply of Built Puffs or Built Bars at Built.com for a 15% discount on your first order with the promo code LOCKED15. Hey, Giant fans, thanks so much for making the Locked on Giants podcast your first listen or watch every single day. Now, make your second listen, the Locked on NFL Draft podcast. Damian Parson and Keith Sanchez provide in-depth coverage of the biggest NFL draft prospects with deep dives into the sleepers and hidden gems that can change your favorite NFL franchise. Find Locked on NFL Draft wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back, Giant fans, to the Locked On Giants podcast. I'm Patricia Trena, your host, and we are making a case for different positions at 25, which is where the Giants are set to pick. And I'm going to talk about receiver in just a moment, but before I do, I want to uh, just give you a heads up on what's coming up this week on the Locked on Giants podcast. Mike Golick Jr. is going to rejoin me again. Um, We're going to do another show. Um, I also have NFL.com draft analyst Lance Zerline is scheduled to join me on the pod. We're going to talk draft as we get you ready for the draft, which is coming up. I mean, here we are. We're in April. 
It's a big month. It's a lot of stuff coming up towards the back end of the month, and I'm excited about it. Now, um, also, I know some of you asked about having some of the locked on hosts, the college hosts uh, on the program, so we could preview some of the prospects. And I think what I'm going to do, since, you know, there's so many and I don't think I'll get them all in, let's just see who the Giants pick. And then what I'll do is I'll reach out to the college hosts and have them come on and talk about their school's prospects and how they're a fit. I think that's going to be probably the best course of action for the show's post draft. So that's what's coming up here on the Lot on Giants podcast. And uh, hope you will tune in all week long. There'll be other stuff, of course, but uh, that's a little sneak peek of what I've got coming up. So let's get back to making the case for or again. Let's look at receiver now. And I use that in quotes because the Giants' number one receiver is tight end Darren Waller. I think that is pretty much a given. And as I might have mentioned on another show, I think what the Giants are trying to do with receiver is they've got, you know, Waller, this big body tight end who could be a matchup nightmare for opposing defenses, depending on where you line them up. He can hopefully clear guys out of the way, defenders out of the way, so that some of these smaller guys that have yards after the catch ability can go and do their damage. So I think that's the direction the Giants are trying to go in. So what does that mean for drafting a receiver, especially from a class which, while deep, is predominantly slot receivers? What might the Giants do there? And should they do receiver? Well, listen, I think we could all agree, and I think Joe Shane would agree, that it would be nice to have a nice big X receiver on the outside to go along with Waller. Because you have, you know, um, a, a good tight end, you have a big X receiver. Good luck trying to figure out who to cover if you're the opposing defense. Absent that, though, they can, like I said, they can use some of these smaller guys to maybe run some of the shorter routes and pick up yards after the catch, which is, you know, opening things up for the passing game. But as far as making a case for receiver, I would point out that you've got Wandale Robinson, Colin Johnson, Sterling Shepard. Those three guys are coming back off of injuries, season-ending injuries. You've only signed Isaiah Hodgins, Shepard, Jamison Crowder, Paris Campbell, and uh, Jeff Smith. You've only signed those guys to one-year deals. So it's kind of, um, gosh, I hate to use this term, but I'm going to. It's kind of a try before you buy or invest long-term, I should say, in these guys. So which of these guys are going to fit in long-term? Because at the end of the year, they're not going to sign all these guys back. You know, I don't even think all these guys that they sign are going to necessarily make the roster, all right? I don't know that Sterling Shepard is going to be ready in time to make the roster. I don't know if Wandale Robinson is going to be ready to make the roster, All right. So some of these guys might not be ready, you know, and if Sterling Shepard's ready, for example, does that mean Jamison Crowder is out? So right now, you know, you've got this whole big competition amongst the wide receivers and anything can happen. And you've got some other guys, too. I think the Giants have 13 receivers under contract. Not all of them, obviously, are going to make the team. So I think, you know, to add another receiver because of the contract status, because of the injury status, I think it makes sense because you're trying to, you know, you're kind of like throwing your marbles up in the air, so to speak, and seeing what lands where, but you're giving yourself options. You're giving the coaching staff options. And I don't think that's a bad thing for this offense. I really don't. Um, You know, you want to give offensive coordinator Mike Kafka various options. And no receiver, no two receivers are alike, you know, as far as skill set and what they could do. Some guys, you know, are good blockers. Some guys are, you know, your speedy types. Um, you know, you, you do have a mix. Now, what's interesting is, um, and I know I answered this last week in one of the mailbag uh, segments, but I'll address it here. Someone asked me if I thought the Giants might already have their X receiver on the roster, maybe Isaiah Hodgins or maybe Darius Slayton, who they signed to a two-year deal. 
I don't know that I would go so far as to say that right now. I think Slayton and Hodgins maybe are, are like number two receivers. Could they play that X role? Absolutely. But am I going to consider them, you know, like a, I, I don't know, like a, a CD Lamb or a, um, you know, an AJ Brown? I don't know. I, I wouldn't go there just yet. Do they have the potential to be there? Maybe, but I wouldn't say that that's where they're at right now. Could they get there? Yeah. But um, so the point being is, is year two of the offense, the Giants are going to open things up a little bit more. I think we'll see some more downfield passing. Like I said, I think there's going to be an emphasis on yards after the catch big plays, which the Giants were just horrible at last year. So we need to see how they're going to step up. We need to see how they're going to be utilized. And, you know, um, Brian Dable at the league meetings last week spoke about how the springtime is a time to experiment with different looks, moving guys around. And, um, you know, that's something to pay attention to for those of us who are going to be there um, during the spring. And that's certainly something I'm going to pay attention to, to kind of get a feel for what they might do. Because sometimes, actually a lot of times what we see in the spring doesn't necessarily make it into training camp, nor does it make it into the regular season. But, you know, there are certainly things to keep an eye on and uh, trends that you want to keep an eye on in the OTAs. And, you know, in the past, and I'm sure this is going to be the case now with the OTAs, uh, the media usually gets every third OTA to come in and watch. But um, it'll be worth paying attention to because receiver is definitely a position that the Giants need a little bit better production out of. I think we can all agree upon that. And as far as the draft goes, um, I would say that if they could get a tallish receiver, go for it at 25. But if the, the big boys are off the board, maybe you wait on receiver. Maybe you wait a little later into the draft because the impression I got when Joe Shane spoke to the media at the end of the season, while they would like to have a big X receiver, a true number one receiver, I don't think they're going to necessarily lose sleep if they don't find that this year, you know, better to wait and find the right guy than to pluck somebody out of the draft, especially in the first round. And you find out that guy's not, not what you thought he was. So I, I think, you know, receiver, certainly a position to look at at 25. Um, but it depends on who's there. And I think if none of the big boys are there, you go in a different direction. All right. So far, we've made a case for cornerback, for receiver. Let's talk about something else in the next segment. Don't go anywhere. Hey, Giant fans, with the NFL offseason programs about to start later this month, the Giants report to Quest on April 17th, which means OTAs and spring football and a whole bunch of activities is not far behind. So if you want to keep up with the latest, make sure you're following me, not just on Twitter, but on Instagram at Patty Traina, P-A-T-T-I-T-R-A-I-N-A. And also be sure to check out my Instagram account for the special promotional giveaway that I have going on for all giant fans. Again, that Instagram account is at Patty Traina, P-A-T-T-I-T-R-A-I-N-A. All right, Giant fans, welcome back to the Locked on Giants podcast. I'm your host, Patricia Trena. We're making a case for different positions at number 25 for the New York Giants. We've talked about cornerback. We've talked about receiver. Now let's talk about something else. Center, defensive line, edge rusher, linebacker, trade out of the first round. All right, let's talk about it. Any number of positions. All right. First off, folks, let's talk about center. I know at one point I thought maybe center would be in consideration. I don't think that anymore. Um, the more work I've done on the centers in this draft, the more I've spoken to people who study the draft, um, you know, or and have been studying the draft, going back to, uh, you know, the college football season when I was doing the NFL season, um, I think you can probably get a decent center day two of the draft. So I'm going to take center off the board at 25 for the Giants. I, I, I just can't make a case for that when there's, you know, given the value, given the other options. 
What about linebacker? I can't make a case for that either, folks. And here's why. I think Bobby Okereke is going to be an every down linebacker for the Giants. And, you know, to have another inside linebacker on the field, that would mean they'd have to be on their base a lot. And I don't think that's going to happen. A lot of times, you know, the Giants, they, they're they not in their base. They're in nickel or some kind of sub package. Now, if they could find a linebacker that can cover um, to where they don't have to lean on the safeties, maybe to play those pseudo linebacker roles. Yeah. Uh, you know, maybe you can make a little case for it, but I don't think it's a strong enough case. I think linebacker, maybe you're looking at day three for a linebacker. Um, there should be some good linebackers available in day three, early in day three. I would not wait um, late if I were the Giants. Um, running back actually came up. Somebody said, well, what about running back? What if B. John Robinson is there? Mm, you know, he's a really, really good prospect, but you know what? If you bring him back and you, you've got Saquon coming back on, on the franchise tag, presumably, unless he signs a deal, um, that would probably mean the end of Saquon. So I don't think the Giants would draft Bijan Robinson if he's there at 25. I, I mean, that's a little rich for my taste. But that being said, I don't think Bijan Robinson's going to make it down to 25. I could see, you know. If the Giants pass on him, I bet you Dallas grabs him because, you know, Dallas just cut Zeke and Tony Pollard is still, you know, coming off that broken uh, leg that he had or ankle. I could see Dallas grabbing uh, Bijan Robinson. And, you know, this running back class, like you said, this is a deep class. So you could probably get a potential heir to Saquon Barkley's throne later in the draft. So running back, I, I can't make a case for that now. What about defensive linemen, interior defensive linemen? Mm, well, let's see. I believe the Giants are going to sign Dexter Lawrence before the start of the season. I, I, I know they're working on it. There was a report that they're working on a deal with him. Leonard Williams. I do think that if Leonard Williams is over his neck issue that he had, that he fought through towards the second half of the season last year, I could potentially see him getting an extension, but it won't be a big, you know, a long-term extension. So in the meantime, you have added, you know, um, Nacho, Nunez Roches, uh, you have DJ Davidson coming back, you have Ryder Anderson, Jihad Ward could give you a few snaps on the defensive line. I'm not saying it's not any, but at 25, I, I don't think I would go 25 there. I, I just, think that's too rich. What about edge rusher? Hmm. That's a position. Let's talk about that. Edge rusher right now, they have, the Giants have Kayvon Thibodeau. They have Aziz Ojolari. They brought back Jihad Ward, who could give them some outside snaps. And Ellerson Smith is on the roster, a guy who we really don't know a whole lot about because he's been injured the last couple of years. I would not object to another edge rusher at 25. If there is one there, I would not object to that. I do think, however, in terms of priority, if it comes down to a cornerback or an edge rusher at 25, and you have a bunch of guys that are clustered with the same, about the same grade, I think need wins out there. And in that case, cornerback wins out. But edge, I could certainly make a case for edge rusher at 25. All right. What others, what about a surprise, you know, um, offensive guard? Nah, I can't make a case for guard. I think the Giants have a lot of guards and look, you know, my guess here with the offensive line, and I, I get this question a lot, what will the Giants do in offensive line? Joe Shane, when he spoke to reporters at the, um, the NFL league meetings, said that Ben Bredesen is a guy they would be comfortable pl uh, plugging in at center, even though I think Bredesen played only 30 snaps at center. That would not surprise me. So if Bredesen moves over to center to start, and the Giants, meanwhile, pick up a young center in the draft, they can kind of get that kid ready while Bredesen holds down the fort. So 
if Bredesen's moving over to center from left guard, what do they do at left guard? That's where you have a competition. Now, at that spot, amongst the people that will compete probably include um, Joshua Zudu, if that neck is healed up, Shane Lemieux, who was supposed to be the left guard before he went and had the turf toe injury that basically ended his season. Uh, and I think they have a few other guys. You know, let's see where Marcus McKeithen fits in. Um, I think they have, uh, I think Tyree Phillips can play guard. You know, Jack Anderson, I think, can play guard. So they have guys at guard to where, you know, I don't know that I would I would go guard at 20. You know, I wouldn't go guard at 25. I wouldn't go guard at, at the at, in day two either. I might look at guard, you know, undrafted free agents. I think they have enough guards. Tackle, look, you got Evan Neal and you got Andrew Thomas. So you're not going tackle at 25, but I could see them picking up a tackle for death later on in the draft. I can, I can legitimately make a case for that. So really, you know, you know, the, what about safety? Let's talk about safety. Could they pick up a safety there? Mm. Here's the thing. Um, if McKinney's hand gets back to where it should be, he's, he's their guy. So I, and, and, you know, there's optimism that he'll be okay. McKinney um, is their guy next to him. They have Dane Belton. They have Jason Pinnock, two young guys that I think can grow into that role. Sort of like how Julian Love grew into the role. They brought in Bobby McCain on a one-year deal to kind of provide some veteran leadership. Safety at 25 to me, too rich. So at the end of the day, at number 25, I think it comes down to corner or receiver. And if I were stacking up the, the needs, I would probably lean more towards cornerback. But of course, it depends on who's on the board. And I, you know, I, I say this because a lot of you write in and say, what will the Giants do at 25? My answer, it depends on who's on the board. But I would say, you know, if you're trying to marry need with um, best available, given the depth of receiver, given the depth at the cornerback class, my guess is you're probably going to get good value at 25 at those two positions, which is where I think the Giants are going to go. So that being said, it's going to be interesting to see over the next few weeks. You know, we'll have Joe Shane for his pre-draft uh, presser. I don't know what date that's going to be, but that's going to be coming up. Usually they do that, I think, um, like a week or a few days before the draft. So that's coming up. Um, we'll see if there's more clues in there. But I, right now, think it's going to go either cornerback or receiver. I think that's probably the way the Giants will go, depending on who's on the board. Can't say that enough. So that being said, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to do it for us here on the Locked on Giants podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening. Appreciate you. Coming up this week, Mike Goley Jr. will be on tomorrow's show. Um, and then later on in the week, we are going to have Lance Zerloin. I believe he's going to be on Thursday's show. So those are the two guests that I have scheduled to be on the program with me. Hope you will tune in. Thank you so much for making a Lock on Giants podcast your first listen of the day or if watching on YouTube, your first watch of the day. I'm your host, Patricia Trena. We will see you again soon, Giant fans.